Today I'm at the labs at EEWeb, and I'm looking at this Regal DSA815 spectrum analyzer. It covers a frequency range of 9 kilohertz to 1.5 gigahertz. One of the first things you'll notice when you take it out of the box is it's relatively small, especially for a spectrum analyzer. And yet, despite its small size, it actually has some heft to it. Uh, it gives you a very good feeling about the build quality. It doesn't feel cheaply made. It doesn't feel flimsy and plasticky. One of the things I noticed when I pulled it out of the box and got it powered on was the menu structure and the front panel buttons. They are very similar to those of an Agilent analyzer. I've used Agilent spectrum analyzers a lot in the past, and for me, I was able to pull this out of the box, power it up, and get right to work. Uh, I didn't need to go through the documentation, digging through it to find different settings and different modes that I could put the analyzer in. It was all very familiar to me. On the left, you'll see some status indicators, and those will tell you what kind of detector you're using, uh, what mode your traces are in, and other settings. Uh, to illustrate just how easy it is to get right to work with this analyzer, I have a 950 megahertz signal set up that's getting uh, pushed into the analyzer. And if I wanted to measure that, well, the first thing I'd do is I'd, I'd put the marker on it using just the peak button. And then the next thing I'd want to do is I'd probably want to center my analyzer on there so I can say market or center frequency. And then to zoom in on that signal, I'm going to dial the span down. Since I know it's a pretty narrow band signal, I can keep dialing down like this, or I can just go right down here and say I want to go down to 10 megahertz. And there's my signal. Now, if I want to go ahead, and I only have one peak here, but if I want to, I can say I want to go to peak, and I want to turn on my peak table. see that it's detecting any additional peaks that show up and it's updating frequency and amplitude in real time. This unit also has a tracking generator built in. If you've never used a tracking generator, they're very handy for uh, determining correction factors. This analyzer can correct data for you uh, in real time. If you have a correction factor file, you can load it in and it'll adjust the amplitude based on frequency uh, depending on that correction factor. And so I'm going to go ahead and switch over to a, a, a different circuit, a filter circuit, just to show you the utility of a tracking generator. So now I have the analyzer hooked up to a filter circuit. The output of the tracking generator is going into the input of the filter, and the output of the filter is coming back into the spectrum analyzer. And what you'll see with the tracking generator is it sweeps the same frequency output as it's reading on the input of the analyzer. And so it makes for a very easy way to determine gain or loss through a filter or an amplifier or even just through a long run of cable where you need to know what the loss is. So if I go ahead, I'm going to hit the tracking generator button, I'm going to turn it on. You'll see that the green light lights up so that even if you go over to another menu, you still know that it's on. And here you see the passband of my filter. So if I then go in and, and I want to determine what that passband actually is, I can turn on some markers. And I can say, let's set this marker over here to, let's say right about here, let's say that's the passband. It, it might not be the exact 3 dB point, but it'll be close. And let's add another marker. And let's put that marker over here at about the same amplitude. Uh, so we'll say that that's our passband. And if I want to say, okay, well, what is my actual marker without switching between them, uh, then I can come down here and I can turn on my marker table, and you'll see that it's about 925.5 megahertz to 967.5 megahertz, and you'll see those amplitudes update in real time. Now, if I want to let the analyzer settle uh, so that I can count for any noise or anything else that's being generated and, and get a good readout, then what I can do is I can come in here and I can change my trace from clear right to max hold and that'll retain the greatest value at each frequency point as the analyzer sweeps. And so if I clear that menu off, then again I can see that it's it's starting to settle in and you know, it looks like I did an okay job picking those points. Uh, but maybe I want to know, did I really get a 3 dB point? Uh, 
so I can add another marker. I'm just going to send that one to the peak. So that one's coming in at negative 23.63 dBm. So I'm actually sitting about 5 dB down. I could go and dial those markers in if, if I needed to. Um, I think this demonstrates the point though. Of course, one of the things you have to consider when you're buying an analyzer is the price. And I think the Regal DSA-815 will be hard to beat in that category. The base price is $1,295. If you need the tracking generator, that's $1,495 starting price for the entire unit. Uh, so it's a $200 add-on. And uh, I think if you evaluate the DSA-815 against its competitors, then as long as the DSA-815 meets your needs from a, a frequency range and noise level perspective, it would be pretty hard to beat on value. Uh, I know a lot of the larger manufacturers, they don't even compete in that price range. And so when I saw it and when I saw the price, I didn't know what to expect when I pulled it out of the box, but I've been very impressed. I think it's a wonderful value. And I think if you go ahead and get to play with one yourself, you'll be pretty pleased.